All of them unequivocally said they are committed to peace, then they're committed to full implementation of the cessation hostilities agreement. Malcolm Addis Ahmed, you seem a little surprised. No, but it is Happy New Year. And I think it's quite appropriate that I'm here once again in Addis on the occasion of the celebration of the New Year. As we all know, New Year's are a time where we focus on renewal, we focus on new and fresh beginnings, we focus on trying to have good uh, relations with our neighbors, we focus on peace, and we focus on wanting a greater prosperity uh, for our families, for our communities, for our countries. Uh, I've spent uh, the last few days, um, as you've probably seen, uh, as I do in all my trips to Ethiopia, uh, focused on the importance, as Ambassador Masinga outlined in his May 15th speech, of advancing uh, dialogue to bring an end to the fighting that we see throughout Ethiopia, whether it's in Amhara, in Oromia, and of course, fortunately, uh, to continue the efforts to ensure that the guy guns remain silent uh, in Tigray. And so on the latter, on Tigray, of course, we have the implementation of the Station Hostilities Agreement that's now uh, approaching two years. As you remember, it was signed in November 2022. And so I had an opportunity to meet with the African Union, which, of course, has the lead in terms of ensuring its implementation, and had an opportunity to meet with Tigrayan officials, as well as we'll meet with uh, Ethiopian government officials, to ensure that all elements of it are fully implemented, a strong focus on ensuring that all those that have been displaced by the war are able to return to their homes securely, of course, of ensuring a uh, program on DDR, uh, demobilization, disarmament, and reintegration occurs, and a resolution of outstanding issues through political dialogue. The United States is committed to supporting Ethiopia's sovereignty, territorial integrity, and unity. That is the core of our partnership with Ethiopia. We want to support the Ethiopian people. We are committed to having good relations amongst our people. And I'm very proud, of course, of the contributions uh, that American taxpayers make to help alleviate the suffering and being the largest contributor, bilateral contributor of humanitarian assistance, as you all well know. And I'm very proud to partner with Ambassador Masinga, who I've known for quite some time, and the Embassy Addis team, as they work, again, on all these issues on a daily basis. So with that, let me just stop and, of course, entertain your questions. Let me also say, as uh, Marshan has already referenced, we, the United States, value journalists and reporters, the work you do, the courage you do, you have uh, operating oftentimes in very difficult environments. Freedom of the press is one of our core principles. And so, again, I want to thank you. That doesn't mean you can't be tough with me today. Please ask whatever question you'd like. And, of course, uh, we'll do the best that we can to answer them. I visited IDPs uh, in a camp outside of Mekele. I have heard their cries for help. I have felt their suffering. And on the part of the United States, uh, we have been supporting um, their uh, plight, but we want them to be able, of course, as agreed upon in the Pretoria Agreement, to be able to return to their homes uh, in a secure environment. It is something we stress at every meeting. Uh, I believe, and I've seen reports, that there have been now the beginnings of some uh, returns of IDPs, particularly towards the South, but that's not enough. Um, we as Americans uh, have a, a, a DNA that means that we're quite impatient, so we want to see results, but I'm sure the Ethiopian people are impatient. And so as part of my visits, uh, we continue to uh, push forward both uh, 
the federal government and the interim regional administration of Tigray to again work together uh, to ensure again in the case of the IDPs that uh, they can return home. That's good for all of Ethiopia. And so I hope that we continue to make progress. Uh, we're not satisfied with the amount of progress, but some progress has been made. And we can't lose sight of the fact that uh, the silencing of the guns was critically important, and we must remain committed uh, to a lasting peace. And in my meetings, of course, with any and all Tigrayan officials, uh, as well as with the government, I have heard uh, continued uh, commitment, uh, again, to full implementation of uh, the Pretoria Agreement. As it relates to concerns about uh, lingering Eritrean troop presence in Ethiopia, from what we hear from the U AU verification monitoring team, uh, that is still a concern. And again, uh, we hope that, as was provided for in the Pretoria Agreement, that all non-EndF uh, forces uh, withdraw fully from Tigray. If we look over the scope of the, the last two years, when we were in Pretoria uh, two years ago nearly, uh, many of my colleagues reminded me that cessation of hostilities agreements don't tend to last. But this one has. It has endured. And let's not lose sight of that. There's now peace uh, in Tigray, and that's good for all of Ethiopia. And so while we are impatient and perhaps dissatisfied, and rightfully so, that all elements of it haven't yet been implemented, what I continuously hear from the government, from Tigrayan officials, is a full commitment to make sure that the peace endures. And the United States is prepared to do its part uh, to ensure that that happens together with the African Union, EGAD, which was also there as an observer, and the United Nations, which was there also in Pretoria. So we keep working at it, uh, and that's why I, I keep coming. Uh, but, uh, of course, that's also the daily work of Ambassador Missing and his team. You know, he was in Mekele recently. And so we will continue to work on that. But as we work on that, let's not lose sight of the fact the United States also cares about the unfortunate circumstances of considerable violence in Amhara and still violence in Oromia. And so to your question of Agoa, we would like nothing more than Ethiopia to uh, return and be reinstated into Agoa. But in accordance with our uh, law, there is a, a requirement that there not be any uh, violations of human rights by government forces. And then sadly, as many of you have reported, there are still abuses and atrocities being committed. And therefore, as long as that continues, uh, it won't be possible for Ethiopia to be uh, reintegrated, reinserted into a goal. But we would like nothing better. So just because we were able to achieve peace in Tigray, uh, the work is not done. And that's why the United States continues to offer uh, its good offices for dialogue with um, Harafano, if that is possible. And as you know, I participated in talks with the OLA and the government in Dar es Salaam uh, in November of uh, last year. And we remain open uh, to pursuing further talks, whether it's on the Oromia track or if it's at all possible uh, in uh, the case of Amhara. These conflicts do not have military solutions. Uh, these difficult Historical issues need to be resolved through dialogue. And I know that there's a, a national dialogue process, which we hope uh, will take effect uh, and gain uh, momentum, and we support those efforts. And there also must be uh, uh, a full accounting of what has happened, and uh, we support, again, the government's efforts on transitional justice. So we are deeply engaged in partnership with the government, and of course, with any of those who are interested in pursuing peace uh, for all Ethiopians. Um, of course, I go to Tigray um, and Ambassador Masinga. We go because we want to ensure that the cessation hostilities agreement endures. And that's very important to maintaining the peace in Tigray. It's difficult quite frankly, for us to travel to Amhara and Ormia precisely because of the continued fighting. 
Nonetheless, I know that Ambassador Masinga and his embassy at his team are always looking for opportunities in cooperation with the government of Ethiopia to see how uh, dialogue or negotiations might be able to take place to bring an end to these conflicts. And so it may not be visible to you every day. And frankly, a lot of uh, efforts to promote peace need to be done quietly uh, and behind the cameras. But we are working on it, I can assure you, uh, each and every day. Likewise, in the case of Oromia, you have seen that we did conduct some talks uh, in Tanzania. We were hopeful that that would produce uh, a good outcome uh, in silencing the guns in Oromia. But just because that didn't succeed doesn't mean we have stopped our efforts. And in fact, together with Norway, uh, we remain fully committed uh, to supporting any efforts to also advance uh, an end to the violence uh, in Oromia. And it's something I discuss with the Prime Minister uh, each and every time I come. And we talk about how, again, the United States can support uh, his p efforts to achieve uh, peace uh, through dialogue. And uh, you can rest assured the United States will remain committed. So even if it's not as visible, and again, I appreciate the opportunity to talk about it today, um, you can uh, be certain that it is a focus of our work. And as you heard very clearly from uh, Ambassador Masinga's May 15th speech, that is our policy. And whenever you hear American policymakers, whether here or in Washington, you will hear the same refrain. We want to see peace for all Ethiopians. Well, I haven't personally. Again, I leave some of the follow-up work uh, to the embassy. And perhaps, again, uh, the question here is, you know, who are the right people to meet? Who are those that are most interested in, in, uh, in pursuing peace? And again, uh, I appreciate the, your efforts to try to learn every detail, uh, but not every detail comes out uh, right away. But in due time, I'm sure everything will become public. Thank you. Certainly in my meetings with Tigrayan authorities and TPLF, um, I urge them to continue to have complete support for full implementation of the Pretoria Agreement, which they assured me. I met with uh, President Gatachureda of the Interim Regional Administration. I met with the Vice President, as you know, General Sadkan, and this morning I met with Dr. Debrezion, head of the TPLF. All of them unequivocally said they are committed to peace, then they're committed to full implementation of the cessation hostilities agreement. That's what the United States cares about. And so um, whatever internal divisions there may be in politics, not everybody's in agreement. Whatever the divisions may be, we urge that they be resolved through dialogue. Uh, eventually, I imagine there'll be regional elections uh, in Tigray, as there will be in other regions. You have a national election coming. Um, people will pick their leaders, and that's the way to resolve things through democ democratic means. Uh, so we're not getting ourselves involved uh, in intra-party squabbles or in intra-regional political dimensions, but rather we send the same message, is make sure that what you're doing uh, looks to advance uh, the basic principles that were agreed to uh, in Pretoria in the case of Tigray. As far as uh, the reports that we've seen about uh, potential conversations between Tigrayan officials and Eritrea, uh, let's just be clear. Uh, what we want to see is no return to war between Ethiopia and Eritrea, no incursions uh, into Ethiopian territory or Eritrean territory by either side. And we want to, if we can, even uh, help implement fully the Algiers Agreement of 2000, which uh, delineated the border, to make sure there isn't any confusion or misunderstanding between the two countries. Um, so if there is dialogue between them, again, that's an issue that, you know, for others to, to look into. Um, but the point being here is that it should be focused on ensuring an end to any human rights abuses being committed by any forces. It should be intended to improve the relationships between the two countries uh, and to help really this region, which is suffering from so much conflict, whether it's in Sudan or, of course, you've got al-Shabaab in Somalia. Um, these are issues that, you know, we discuss as the United States, again, with the African Union during my visits here, 
Oh, I met this morning with the uh, executive secretary of EGAD, Dr. Workney. Again, we talk about all these issues about how the United States can be a partner uh, for peace. Um, so, again, that's the, as far as I will say, uh, I don't know the specifics, obviously, of, of the conversations, and you should ask them uh, about it. Let me state unequivocally, the United States supports Somalia's territorial sovereignty, integrity, and unity. And we've made that very clear. Uh, we want to see peaceful and good relations between all countries in the region, and certainly between Ethiopia and Somalia. And we urge both to uh, find ways to move forward and look how they can continue to work together. We are well aware of the ENDFs in Ethiopia's sacrifice in Somalia uh, in the fight against al-Shabaab. That's what we should be focusing on, frankly, from the you know, U.S. perspective. How can we support Somalia in its fight against al-Shabaab? And that's really what we are concerned about. And that, of course, requires that there be a good uh, relationship between the two countries. And when we talk to the leaders in the region, we ask that Hopefully, they can find ways, again, to increase cooperation. There's no reason that uh, these two countries uh, should uh, uh, have difficulties um, that can't be resolved, again, through conversations. But again, both countries need to accept the basic principles uh, outlined, frankly, by the AU Charter, and it's, you know, which is a affirmation and recognition and understanding of each other's territorial sovereignty, integrity, and unity. Um, you mentioned Egypt. Um, we have, obviously, conversations with all countries uh, in the region. We've been discussing with Egypt quite a bit uh, its concerns on Sudan. Uh, when I meet later with uh, Foreign Minister Taye, we will also be talking about Sudan as well as other issues. And so, again, the key here is for what we hope the governments in the region to find ways to cooperate to end the devastating war in Sudan, to develop regional economic integration and in, in vehicles to push forward the type of prosperity they want to see uh, for their peoples. Um, and that's the message that we send. And so, of course, there are historical um, tensions um, each country has rich histories, but that doesn't mean that in standing up for your rich histories and sovereignty, that it needs to come into conflict with some other countries. So um, rest assured that we talk to uh, uh, all capitals. Uh, my colleague uh, Tom Perello was just recently in Cairo, um, and we expect, again, to continue to have conversations um, that hope to reduce tensions and focus on the task at hand, which is to promote peace, security, and stability, and to try to achieve prosperity for all the peoples of the Horn. It's about gender-based violence, um, because we all should be concerned, whether you're male or female. It's horrific what has happened in Ethiopia. It's horrifying what's happening in Sudan. I will relate to you that we were recently in Geneva, in Switzerland, pushing for uh, peace in Sudan and protection of human rights uh, through our new Alps uh, initiative. And we met with Sudanese women and we heard their cries for help and we heard about the horrific things happening in Sudan. And we've also met with Ethiopian women uh, who have suffered likewise. It is imperative that it be understood that it is unacceptable. It cannot happen to have the brutality of what we've seen in terms of gender-based violence, and it is a priority for the United States. We even have a special envoy uh, for global women's issues, uh, Ambassador uh, Gupta, uh, and, and we put a high priority on this, and you can rest assured in our meetings, we always raise it. And I wish, in fact, in many of the meetings that I go to uh, even in, in these negotiations, that there were more women at the table. Because I think if there were more women at the table, we'd have even better prospects uh, for peace, undoubtedly. As far as um, the national dialogue, as I mentioned, we are supportive of a national dialogue that is inclusive and credible. 
But whether it's inclusive enough or credible enough, that's for the Ethiopian people to decide. But what I hear constantly is that people think that is the best way to overcome against some of historical grievances. Uh, and so we are prepared to support it. Uh, I've heard the prime minister say it is a priority for him. So I hope it, it yields the, the desired result, but it's really for the Ethiopian people to decide uh, you know, whether um, it is making sufficient progress. Uh, but we want to, again, stand by that. Secondly, on transitional justice, as uh, Secretary Blinken said when he was here, and I was here with him in March of 2023, it is incredibly important to have accountability for what has happened uh, during the Tigray War. And we recognize, because we're familiar with transitional justice processes in other countries, I was involved in our policy and work on Colombia, for example. It takes time. That doesn't mean you need to be patient, just that we understand that it takes time. And so we appreciate the efforts that the government has been making on transitional justice. Um, and in, in the end of the day, we'll see whether it holds uh, those perpetrators to account and whether it satisfies the demands of the Ethiopian people for justice. Um, but again, we want to be a partner. Uh, we want to share our experiences, what work we've done uh, in, you know, around the world um, and help, again, ensure that there is a traditional justice process that is worthy of the expectations of all those that, that have suffered. This is why, look, I had a meeting with uh, uh, the, the Commissioner Tem Temeskin uh, yesterday uh, in which we talked about the urgency of launching the DDR program because these forces should be completely demobilized. These individuals who are combatants need to go back to their daily lives and they want to go back to their daily lives. The United States is contributing to a, a fund that the UNDP is uh, putting together. We know the financing is there for the first tranche, which would demobilize about 75,000 of the Tigrayan combatants. I heard yesterday from uh, President Gattachi Reda, as well as previously from Vice President Sadkan, and even from Dr. Debrisian. They are fully committed to going through with the DDR. So let's get going. Let's make sure that we deliver results that can ensure a lasting peace in Tigray. There is no no reason or explanation that could be given for returning to violence. The tragic suffering that Tigray and Ethiopia faced uh, during the war is unfathomable. It was at the time the worst uh, conflict on earth. But through courage of political leadership in Pretoria, that was brought to an end. That same courage needs to be displayed every day to ensure that you don't go back to conflict or war and that you do what is necessary to bring peace to Amhara, to Oromia. Because with peace, this country of Ethiopia can thrive and can reach its full economic potential. And so, again, uh, I'm very proud uh, of the work that we have done as the United States, um, but the work is unfinished. And we are committed, again, to being a good partner to all Ethiopians and to hopefully address uh, these issues through dialogue and to get to the point where we're not talking about uh, war, but we're simply talking about increasing trade. And so, again, I really want to, to thank all of you uh, for the work that you do and all Ethiopians for how kind and uh, engaged they've been with me whenever they see me somewhere, whether it's here or in the United States. Um, I appreciate that very much from the bottom of my heart. Um, and uh, we will continue, again, uh, from our side uh, to do whatever is, is possible. But it is essential to any country to have full respect for human rights, to have full respect for all uh, freedom of speech, freedom of the press, there are core values and beliefs, and we believe that 
all people uh, pretty much would like to see that. So again, I wish Ethiopians all the best in this new year. And let's make sure that 2017 is even better than the last year. Thank you.